Hey everyone, welcome back to Tan's Top 10 channel. Uh, so since my last video was about me talking about my top 10 most disappointing movies of all time, I figured next video should be me praising some movies and the best movies. So today we're talking about the top 10 best picture winners in my opinion. Uh, there's not going to be a whole lot of like older movies, like classical movies, because I haven't seen a whole lot of them. Uh, so a lot of these picks are going to be newer, but there are some older movies in there as well. So I'm going to throw in some honorable mentions first. Uh, Rocky, that was hard to leave off the list. Lawrence of Arabia, Casablanca. Schindler's List should be on the list, but I've only seen it once. And it's just such a hard movie to, like, it's so difficult to watch. It's a perfect movie. It's one of the best, but I've only seen it once and I just, I don't think I'll ever rewatch it in my life. So that's why it's just an honorable mention. And then Braveheart. So kicking off the list at number 10 is Parasite, the most recent best picture winner. Uh, this is at number 10 because it's the most recent it's pretty new. Uh, but over time, this could easily climb up the list to, uh, higher spots, but this definitely deserved to win Best Picture over 1917 or some other movies. Um, I was just really surprised by this movie. I had no idea what it was about when I uh, before going into it, and I was just kind of blown away by how weird and unexpected and surprising it was, and how like blend. It's funny. Uh, there are some parts that are kind of scary. It's really intense, especially towards the end. And it's really dramatic, and it just gives a great look at a uh, class like system and stuff, and uh, just really entertaining movie as well. And if you have not seen Parasite yet, I definitely recommend it. Uh, if you're gonna have to read subtitles, it's not in English, but it's still an amazing movie. And just get over it, please. All right, my number nine favorite Best Picture winner is Gladiator. Uh, this one. A little cheesy at some points, um, but Gladiator is just so damn enjoyable, so entertaining. Uh, Russell Crowe gives an amazing performance in this movie. The direction, the cinematography of this movie is awesome. Uh, it still looks amazing, except for that first, I said in multiple videos, that first battle. A little choppy. I uh, can't really tell what's going on too well, but other than that, the fight choreography in the gladi uh, Gladiator fights is awesome. And just a really badass revenge movie. And uh, yeah, Gladiator is awesome. All right, my number eight pick is probably a little controversial, but I love this movie. Titanic. Uh, I know a lot of people hate this movie, but I said it before, I enjoy the hell out of it. Uh, I don't rewatch it too often. Uh, it's over three hours long, and it's a little it's a little sad. Just a little sad. Uh, Tan, Tan cries a little, a little bit at the end. But... Uh, Titanic's just charming as hell. I always fall for the love story between Leo and Kate Winslet. It's just, it's adorable. And uh, the production design and everything, uh, once the ship starts, well, even before the ship starts sinking, the production design is flawless. But just uh, James Cameron's direction uh, with him helming just like the scope. I mean, you really feel like Titanic is Titanic, like huge. And uh, yeah, just an amazing job by everyone involved. My number seven pick is Unforgiven. Um, I watched this one for the first time last year or two years ago, and I enjoyed the hell out of Unforgiven. Uh, Clint Eastwood, such a badass in this movie. Um, honestly, my favorite character is probably English Bob, played by uh, Richard Harris. He's not in the movie that long, but I think he gives a great performance. And uh, Gene Hackman won an Oscar for this movie, and he deserved it. This movie is so good. Uh, it's probably my favorite Western that I can think of off the top of my head, but, and Morgan Freeman is awesome as well. Unforgiven is just like a really, really cool look at Western movies as a whole. Uh, like, when people die in this movie, you really, really feel like, oh shit, that guy just died. He's like gone forever. And it's kind of sad. Uh, even when they're shitty people, like, you're just like, Damn, that guy's dead. Like, dead. So, uh, Unforgiven. Uh, if you have not seen it, I cannot recommend it enough. It's uh, it's not your typical shoot 'em up western. You know, there's not a whole lot of shootouts, but it's more of a character um, build movie. Um, a lot of 
awesome characters in this movie, a lot of great dialogue. I mean, it's shot beautifully and directed and acted even better. So, Unforgiven is unforgettable. Coming in at number six is The Departed. Fucking firefighters. I love The Departed so much. Uh, out of all the Best Picture winners on this list, this one might be the most rewatchable for me. Uh, I love the dialogue, the acting, um, the direction of this movie. I know it's a remake off of Infernal Affairs, but uh, I still think it's a great movie. Um, yeah, The Departed. I just, I kind of want to watch it right now. That's how much I love this movie. And uh, a lot of people say that Scorsese didn't deserve to win for this movie. I mean, obviously he should have won for Goodfellas. That is his magnum opus. That's his masterpiece. But, I mean, he got it for The Departed when I'm not going to complain. I mean, it's an amazing movie still. So, good job, Martin Scorsese. All right, coming in at number five is The Silence of the Lambs. I adore this movie. This this movie is also super rewatchable for me. It's really creepy, uh, really unnerving. Buffalo Bill might be the scariest mo like human character in a movie ever. You know, he's not a demon or something. I mean, he's a fucking monster, but... Uh, Buffalo Bill in this movie is terrifying, but I mean, obviously, Jodie Foster and Anthony Hopkins give career best performances in this movie, and just a really intense, scary, and really disturbing movie that is also super entertaining, well written, well acted, uh, an awesome score. Who did the score for this movie? Was it Howard? Howard Shore? I was gonna say it's Howard Shore. Uh, an awesome score by Howard Shore, and yeah, uh, it's a nice tight like two hour movie and uh silence of the lambs definitely still holds up coming in at number four is no country for old men now if i would have made this list like when this movie first came out this movie would not have been on that li on my list uh because the ending pissed me off it just really pissed me off if you've seen the movie you know what i'm talking about but over time, this is a movie that has grown on me. I respect the hell out of the Coen brothers for making this movie. And, oh my God, I love this movie. I, this is another, another movie that is so rewatchable for me. Um, it's really intense, scary, uh, really violent. But just uh, an awesome look at this cat and mouse game between uh, Javier Bardem and Josh Brolin's character. And Tommy Lee Jones might be my favorite performance in this movie uh slash favorite character i know javier bardem gets all the love he got the oscar and he's amazing but tommy lee jones in this movie might be my favorite but uh it's, like there's not a whole lot of dialogue in this movie but the way it's written and the court or the cinematography by roger deakins just phew, this movie looks beautiful this movie is insanely good looking. It's what, 13 years old? I think 13 years old, 2007. This movie still looks beautiful. Uh, yeah, just No Country for Old Men. If you haven't seen it, watch it. Just don't be disappointed by the ending. Just kind of process it. All right, coming in at number three is The Godfather Part Two. Godfather Part Two if I'm correct, is the first and only sequel to ever win Best Picture. I'm pretty sure I'm correct on that. But anyways, I adore The Godfather Part Two. It is insanely long. It's like over, it's like 200 minutes, maybe four, it might be even closer to four hours. But uh, it's such a great movie. It is one of the fastest, like 200 plus minute movie that you'll ever watch. It is so intriguing. Uh, the flashback scenes between uh, with Robert De Niro uh, as Vito and showing like how he grew up and his journey to, into becoming a big crime boss is awesome. Uh, and then the whole Michael storyline with uh, him and Tom and uh, Fredo, oh, it's such a such a gut punch of an ending. But I love The Godfather Part Two. I don't like it as much as Godfather Part One. I just, but I do think it's a better movie but i i just enjoyed number one a little bit more so maybe we'll be talking about that one a little bit but anyways godfather part two uh 
just one of the best movies ever made. So, yeah. All right, coming in at number two is The Godfather, part one. Uh, yeah, just one of my favorite movies of all time. I think The Godfather, part one, is perfect. Between the acting, the screenplay, the way it's shot, um, the editing, direction, just what a movie. The score, whew. Godfather is perfect. Um, if you haven't seen it, what are, you, what are you doing with your life? Watch The Godfather. It's one of, if not the best movie ever made. And yeah, it deserved to win Best Picture. Uh, Marlon Brando won Best uh, Actor. Yes, Best Actor. Uh, he gives an amazing performance. I think that's why I like number one more is because he's in it. Uh, he's not in number two. You get Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro's awesome, but Marlon Brando's performance, I just adore in this movie but uh you also get Sonny played by James Caan and Tom Tom uh, Hagen played by uh, Robert Duvall probably my favorite character in the Godfather uh trilogy well first two movies but uh yeah Godfather I don't really know what I can say about this movie that hasn't been said just watch it and if you've watched it before rewatch it and keep rewatching it because it's awesome all right, but coming in at number one, what could beat The Godfather? Well, personally for me, Lord of the Rings or Return of the King. Officially, now my favorite movie of all time. So uh, maybe The Godfather is the better made movie, better acted, better directed, or whatever. But Return of the King, just, whew, you say epic. This movie comes right in my mind. Whew, this movie is awesome. Ugh. Where do we even start? Oh, Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My nips are getting hard I'm thinking about this movie. Sorry. Anyways, this movie is badass as shit. You got Aragorn, Legolas, Gimli. They're off getting their army of the dead. You got Gandalf and Pippin hanging out in Minas Tirith. You got Sam and uh, Frodo uh, getting to Mount Doom while Gollum is fucking shit up. But uh, probably my favorite character in this movie is Samwise Gamgee. That guy is the best. He's a badass. He's the best friend in any movie ever made. Samwise, you're the best. And you just have to give this movie props because the Academy does not, have, like, rarely have, do they recognize, like, fantasy movies or uh, big, like, epic blockbusters. You know, they usually go for the artsy movies or the... Oscar Beatty uh, period pieces, but you got to give them credit for rewarding this movie because it deserves it. I mean, it deserved. It won 11 Oscars. That's that's like tied. I believe it's tied for the most ever. I think Titanic also has 11 Oscars. I have to check that. But uh, yeah, it deserves every Oscar it won, and uh, it's just the best. Return of the King is the best, hands down. This video was done. All right, guys, so that is my top 10 favorite Best Picture winners. Uh, let me know what you thought of the video. Uh, share some of your favorite Best Picture winners down in the comments. Uh, might be doing some more videos that are Oscar-related uh, pretty soon. Uh, I got a list of different uh, videos I want to make, so hopefully those, get, we'll, uh, hopefully those will get out soon. Sorry. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.